All right, well, welcome to lesson three of engineering problem solving with computers. This week is a little different. We're going to spend the week talking about databases. Um, I could spend two semesters probably just on databases, or at least someone who is an expert could. I'm no expert in databases. Um, we're just going to touch the surface. So um, the goal here is just to get you some exposure to these. If you've used databases at all yourself in the past, you probably won't learn much this week or maybe a little bit. But if you've never used them, I think it's beneficial to kind of see what their value is and how easy they are to work with, um, at least at the this simple level that we're going to address them. Um, I'm going to just talk a little bit about how to use databases in Excel and then um, a little bit of access and then uh, I'll talk about how they interrelate a little bit. Um, you know if you want to play with databases you can use access but you might want to download MySQL or something like that and play with those. You might want to use um, something like PHP to access databases from a website. All that stuff these days is <clears throat> is pretty straightforward. Today we're just going to deal with Excel and some simple databases. So the data I've decided to use to demonstrate all this is um, some thermal properties data. So we have a, a list of liquids, ammonia, CO2, um, sulfur dioxide, freon, glycerin, etc. And for each of these we have at a different at, at a variety of temperatures we have a thermal conductivity um, density specific heat kinematic viscosity uh, thermal diffusivity and coefficient of thermal expansion notice that for most of these CTEs I don't have data so I'm just going to delete this column um, the way I o got this data into Excel it was a common delimited file I just clicked on the file and it opened it up um, so first thing I want to do is save this as a spreadsheet so I'm gonna I'm in office 07 I'll just say Excel workbook and I'll just save it to my desktop with a Excel extension or at least the office 27 2007 specific um, once again I'm using office 07 it's quite a bit different from um, the older office versions um, but uh, in this for the stuff we're doing both versions will do the same thing and it's relatively similar the study guide uh, talks about this from the perspective of the older office so you can refer to that if you need some help all right so now we've got a spreadsheet so one thing you can do um, is just sort this data so I can go to data and there's a, a few different ways to do this so I can assort um, ascending by the first column I can assort I can sort descending by the first column or I can do click this sort um, logo and sort by anything I want I could sort by temperature largest to smallest let's say smallest to largest okay and it sorts this um, right here by temperature smallest to largest All right let's go back to our original set so that's fairly straightforward the other thing you can do is filter the data um, it's called auto filtering in the older versions of 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 office and uh, now you can just grab these and say sort smallest to largest by thermal diffusivity or smallest to largest by temperature um, it even has things let, let me go out here where you can see it um, you can do these number filters and I can say um, give me the top 10 I think I was clicked on thermal diffusivity no I clicked on one of these must have been this one so I got the top 10 specific heats okay um, yeah you can see this little filtering um, icon right here um, and you can also then do um, greater than, say, um, we're on specific heat still. So I, let's see if 4,000 gives us anything of interest. So here's all the ones above 4,000. And then I can go back to select all if I want to. 
Yeah, see, most of these are below 4,000. So there's lots you can do just with all auto filters and um, or the sorting in terms of dealing with data in Excel. All right. <clears throat> now another thing you can do is add a um, add a control. Let's see if we can get rid of this filter. We can add a combo box control into this and um, deal with data that way. So I'm going to scroll over and I'm going to go to uh, developer insert and right here is the combo box control. I'm just going to take that and trace it out. Okay, and what's this? This will do. What this will do is give me a drop-down box of, uh, for what we want here, the um, it'll be the, the, liquids. All right. So what I can do is right-click that, format control, um, select the input range, and that's the stuff that'll show up in the box. So I'm gonna highlight cells, all the cells in column A. All right, and then somewhere here, right here, I can sort of say OK. And then um, what it needs to do is save a number. So it, if I click the fifth one, it'll save a five, and I have to put that five somewhere. So I'm going to just put it right um, in, say, K1. Okay, so this cell right here will contain a number, and every time I change this, that number will change, and then we'll use that number to pick out uh, specific quantities. All right. So I say OK. Um, so now you see, I if I click the first one, I think what I'd like to do is um, sort that data again. There we go. Okay. So now I pick the first one, I get one. Pick the second one, I get two. Pick down lower, I get 45. Okay. So, um, and the reason there's more than one ammonia in this list is because I have different temperatures there. Okay. So each one of these would give me a different temperature. And if I was really going to use it this way, I'd probably want to um, limit the data to, say, a certain temperature or something like that. Um, so it was clearer what the user was going to pick. But this will give you an idea how this works. So now we use the index function to, say, use this number to pick the third uh, of the various properties from the list. So first thing I'd like to do is put in a temperature and then a connectivity. All right. So I say equals index of and the first thing I do is put my array so this will be all the data so I'm going to start here and go all the way to the bottom all right and then I want to pick my index which is this cell K1 and then I want to say what column I want. So the temperature is in column 2 of that data I selected. So I just put a 2 there. And that will give me the temperature uh, for whatever row I pick. All right. So you see we're now at minus 50. Now if I pick the second row, it will change accordingly. Okay. So the first CO2 one is 20. And that's this right here. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is pick the same thing. So I'm just going to copy this. And put it here. Okay, but now for the thermal conductivity, I want column 3. So now this says uh, for CO2 at 20C, I get a conductivity of 0.0872. I can go to mercury at 100 is 10.51, etc. Okay, so like I say, um, this would probably be a little better if I only picked properties at say 100 C, 
and then I would just see different materials and each one of those I could just I w it would be obvious to the user what they're picking and they could go from there but you can see the power of this it it, it really adds some nice um, features to a sheet uh, if users need to pick out selected data um, that comes from a list <laughs>